Hey, welcome back. We are finishing up our physics unit today with a lesson on tension. Tension as the cause of circular motion. So we've been talking about forces in the overall big scheme of things, but also tension as a force and also circular motion. Circular motion is a little special because we have to change our acceleration to be centripetal acceleration. So I had mentioned that there are three main causes of something moving in a circular path. So an applied force like something like friction, or gravity or tension and so that's this if you take a look at this animation here first of all this is from the excellent site o physics i'll put a link to this simulation in the comments below so you can go and mess around with this if you like and i want you to notice that it's tension that's causing this thing to move in a circular path so it gets pushed you could say or someone releases it from rest at the very beginning there and it comes to a stop here and the animation resets itself one could argue that the ultimate cause of this is also gravity in a way i would agree with you on that but we're going to say the proximate or immediate cause of this circular motion is going to be tension all right let's work through our strategies to be able to solve this problem so let's go ahead and get to it all right so the problem says what is the tension of the string for the object if the angle from the vertical axis is 10 degrees and the object has 4.44 kilograms of mass so I've gone ahead and written down the given information over here. This is like a free body diagram that we already have drawn for us. And one of the first things we're going to do is take this vector and make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And from there we can begin to break it down. So I've already gone ahead and started to anticipate that. But before we do, let's talk about our strategies. And we've gone over these previously. I will put a link up to previous screencasts where we dealt with strategies for solving complex forces problems. So you're going to write what the problem gives you in terms of variables in the x and the y axis, and you're going to draw your free body diagram. Those are kind of combined, and we have basically done those already, more or less. You're going to solve for your components and whatever else you can. Start with like the force due to gravity. We're going to use the sum of the forces in the x and the y axis. And if there is circular motion, we're going to make the correct acceleration value centripetal acceleration. And lastly, if there is friction, we're going to bring the x and the y axis together using the friction equation. That's what's special about the friction equation, is that it draws on the x and the y axis. So we're now roughly in step three. And so we're solving for components and things that are easy to solve for. We can start by looking at our components here and doing some problems. Note that we don't know the tension. And so we don't know the tension in the X or the tension over here. So there are two different ways we can isolate for this, but we still have two unknowns. Although these are important relationships, so I will box them. We will use them later, so we should hold on to those. And we're going to do the same thing with the Y axis and breaking this down with cosine here. And we end up with a very similar sort of mindset. All right, so I'm going quickly through these. If you need to pause, go for it, but these should be review at this point. And another easy thing that we can do is solve for the force due to gravity, of course, because it's so easy and it's going to be in pretty much every problem. You might as well just go ahead and knock that out. So it turns out to be this number here. And then we're moving on. We're moving on to our next step. So our next step is going to involve using the sum of the forces strategy in the x-axis. So I'm going to label this the sum of the forces inwards this time. I could call it in the X or I could call it inwards. In fact, I've kind of done both on the right. Remember these labels are just for us to understand what's going on. So in this case, I'm just gonna add up the forces in the X axis. Well, I've just got one. So that's like listing it out, right? And the second line for the sum of the forces strategy is to say the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration in that axis. At this stage, we can go ahead and recognize this is gonna be moving in a circular path. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this centripetal acceleration. That's a really important step. Actually, you can do this now or you can do this one step later. In either case, you're gonna say that inwards acceleration right here is centripetal acceleration. So that's a modification of the sum of the forces strategy. And you're gonna to have to be able to recognize that. If you can do that, then we could say, well, I know what my centripetal acceleration is. It's the tangential speed squared over radius. And I can go ahead and plug those values in. And next, I can go ahead and set these two things equal to each other, right? This is where you have some of the forces equal to something, some of the forces equal to something else. Set the something equal to the something else here. And this is what we end up with. Now I'm going to go ahead and sub in what I had done previously for our component work for the tension in the X or the inward direction. 
and I'm left with this. And depending on the problem, I did want to show this because it depends on what kind of a problem you have. Depending on the problem, this would be useful and you would solve for something at this point. At this stage, though, in the way that I've designed the problem, there are two unknowns, and I've done this on purpose, so we will have to move on to the y-axis. But I did want to take a slight detour here to point out, like, hey, this would possibly solve some problems for you if you just did the sum of the force strategy in the x and everything else up to this point in this case like for instance if the radius was given to you the radius of this circle right here and the time for it to complete one cycle then you could argue that this velocity or speed really would be a delta x over time what would be the delta x for something moving in a circular path well, that would be the circumference of the circle. So you would have the circumference divided by the time squared, and that would be another problem that could be given to you, like an alternative problem that could be given to you. And, and if that were true, then you could solve the tension there. But that's not the problem we have. Let's deal with the problem we have and just take it in the next step. And the next step that we're going to do, we always solve these problems in very logical ways and just take the next step. And that's going to be the sum of the forces in the y-axis. So the first step of the sum of the forces is just to add up the forces in the y-axis. Now normally I would write this as a plus negative, and I forgot I skipped forward mentally by one step, because the sum of the forces would be positive ty plus a negative fg. Well, plus a negative fg is basically minus fg, right? So it's basically the same thing, and I'm assuming positive is up and negative is down. All right, the next step for the sum of the forces strategy is just to use Newton's second law. So sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration in that axis, which is y. Then we set them equal to each other, and we ask ourselves, is this something or is this nothing? And in this case, this is nothing, meaning this object is not accelerating up in the upwards direction or down in the negative direction. It's not accelerating the y at all. It's not moving in the y at all. So that's going to be zero. And if that acceleration is zero, what happens to this whole term right here? Well, it becomes zero. And so we can move the FG over and solve for the tension of the Y. Once we get the tension of the Y, then the rest of the problem is easy because of our previous work that we did with our components. If we know tension of the Y, we can plug that in up here and solve for the overall tension of the problem. So that's how you would go about solving a circular motion problem that's caused by tension. Hopefully this has been helpful. I'm going to be doing more screencasts and other topics for physics. If you have any comments down below, let me know, and I hope you all have a great day.